It's a concept that is cloaked in so much mystery but that I not only get asked on a daily basis, but it comes up in comments. It comes up, hello Lux lovers, and welcome to another video. So as always, I have my phone here and I'm ready to dive into those questions. I'll be reading the questions off of my phone, but they're also going to be displayed on the bottom of the screen so you can follow along and sort of navigate the video. The first question is, what makes Hermes so desirable? And that is a very fair question. Aside from my amazing community over on Instagram, who are obviously interested in luxury, who obviously buy into the brand for various reasons, I always find it so fascinating to hear your stories and actually see where people are coming from when they start buying into a luxury brand. I find it so fascinating when you share your stories with me about why you particularly buy into certain brands and more so what do you actually love about the brands because I work in branding and because I've spent the majority of my career working in luxury, it really interests me to see what motivates you as a customer. So specifically when it comes to Hermes, this is something that I not only get asked on a daily basis, but it comes up in comments. It comes up in response to my videos. I get DMs about it from people who just happen to come across my content and perhaps don't really understand the context of that content. Whenever we have a Q&A over on Instagram, this does come up almost every single time. Can you explain the pre-spent? It's a concept that is cloaked in so much mystery that I find it fascinating to hear about people's experience, whether it's country specific. I think it feeds ultimately into us learning more about brands and how brands operate. I want to preface by saying that the pre-spend doesn't just apply to Hermes as far as brands are concerned, okay? Many brands such as Porsche is one that I can think about will make you buy into more entry-level products and build your profile before you can actually access those really sought-after items or more custom options. Maybe here's a good section to introduce a little backstory. I was introduced to Hermes as a brand in 2003 through my mom. And at the time, we had a local boutique that, by the way, no longer exists. I grew up in Switzerland, and I believe that boutique was a concession. So back in the day, we're talking 2003, so like the early 2000s in general, the experience of buying from Hermes, and particularly the in-store experience, I think for me was so vastly different if I'm able to compare and contrast to how it is today. And I think there are many factors at play. Of course, as with most luxury brands, there was a bit of a wait, you know, the traditional brands such as Hermes have traditional values, meaning that it's about patience, it's about quality over quantity. And so patience is a huge element and you need to be aware of the process and the processes are very lengthy. And that's something that, you know, keep in mind, that's always been at the core of the brand. But it also meant that like with anything else, if you were a regular shopper at the brand, you would be rewarded in some way. So the more you shopped, the more you took interest in the brand, the more you would be shown things that may further that interest. That is what brands do to keep you as a customer and there's nothing unusual about that. It is a concept that spans across fashion but also beyond fashion in many, many other industries. So it's not to say that it was easy, but I want to highlight that this was before social media. And that gets me to my second point. Of course, nowadays, Hermes is much more popular. It is much more widely seen thanks to tools like social media. And for some people, that chase that we now know more about is so addictive and so interesting. People love the Hermes game and, you know, hashtags like the Hermes game, the Hermes journey, Hermes, so this and that are proof of that. So we've got number one, the thrill of the chase. Number two, the fact that we feel like Hermes is way more visible. There's that visibility, that transparency 
that we now have into the brand. We're able to see what people are doing and buying all over the world in different geographies. And the third thing is I think with brands like Chanel, for example, that have gone really over the top with their price increases, it's all making for a very highly competitive landscape of luxury. So my guess really is that around 2017, 2018, is when the pre-spend concept really truly evolved into what we could say it is like today. Of course, then we had a pancetta and there was this post pancetta, you know, revenge spending surge, which I think was very unprecedented for so many brands. Then we had other luxury houses increase their prices gradually as all of this was unfolding. And I think all of that has made the pre-spend an actual thing that the brand has now embraced into how they do and operate. I honestly think that if I was to start my journey again today, I would feel extremely overwhelmed and not knowing really where to start because there's so much information online, there's so much conflicting information online and I think that furthers how we feel about the brand because our experiences can differ some, so much from what someone else in a completely different country and geography is experiencing. So the pre-spend, uh, as I teased, is country specific. I think at the core what's really important to highlight is that your sales associate is never going to tell you that you need to spend X to get Y. Like if they were to do that, it would really contradict how the brand operates, if that makes sense, because you don't force your customers to buy into the brand. You want to be the one creating desirability so that people want to buy into the brand. So I think ultimately when it comes to the pre-spend, it's down to three things. It's down to your relationship with your SA. Uh, it's down to how busy your local boutique is how competitive it is in the country or the city that you live in and how sought after the item that you want is as well. So I think when it comes to building your profile, it's entirely personal to you how slowly or how quickly you're going to build that profile because of the way the profile and spending history works in a cumulative way. So the more you're buying into the brand, whether you're offered a bag or not, this is something that continues to build and evolve over time. Once you have found your SA and say you've really clicked with somebody at your local boutique or somewhere else where you want to be shopping, I think open communication is the best way forward always. Ask them openly about what their boutique processes are, what you need to do to be considered for a wish list item. And ultimately, I think the biggest takeaway is to remember that this is just a bit of fun and how you approach it is entirely about you. You hold the purchasing power. So it's up to you to decide how you allocate those resources and what you're after to communicate what your expectations are just like you would in any business relationship i always try to compare how you shop at hermes your relationship with your essay to a business relationship which is really truly mutually beneficial at the end of the day so remember to do it on your own terms and remember that patience is more often than not what's going to be rewarded the next question is how do you care for your luxury bags Okay, so I've got my essentials here. I'm gonna show you a few things. When it comes to the leather of Hermes, specifically Togo, Chevre, or Epsom, I think the best thing to get is baby wipes, as trivial as it may seem. I had a little bit of a stain on this one. So all you wanna do is just gently go over and polish. I mean, these are amazing at removing stains and every now and again i will just clean the outside um, also the handle and it gets rid of all kinds of stains so these baby wipes i always keep in the room in my handbag display every single time my bag comes back onto the shelf i give it a quick wipe the second thing is these jewelry um, cloths and these, I think this is from Miss Soma and it must have come with maybe some piece of jewelry that I got, but this you can get anywhere 
any store, even Amazon. So I just use these, just gently polishing the hardware and it's not going to scratch or anything like that. It's just gonna make it really nice and shiny. I think another huge thing is correctly displaying the bags. I got these stands from Amazon. I don't know if you can see behind me. And for some bags that have like chains or maybe the constants, I did a video on, on TikTok showing how I fold the constants uh, strap so that it doesn't bulge the bag, but also doesn't deform the strap. But these stands are great. So anything that has sort of a longer handle would go on that just because it keeps the shape uh, for more rigid bags. It's also great. For this bag, uh, this is the Her bag. The wet wipes are also great because you can clean the leather with them. Another thing I would recommend getting is the lint roller. Sometimes you just wanna give it a quick clean like that, get rid of any fuzzy things attached to the bag. So that's always here as well. I always have either a tied pen or these little things that I got recently uh, that for stain removing. So specifically on bags that are cloth or canvas, this would be great if you say had like a massive, you know, very dramatic spillage, but that doesn't happen every day, but they're just easy to get in and out um, of your purse if need be. This might be a little bit controversial, but I got this spray and it's a waterproof for leather and textiles, for all kinds of leather and textiles. This, uh, I just take my bags outside and I quickly give them a spray from not too close, not too far, but just enough to kind of cover them in a cloud. And this is supposed to help with impregnation of the actual textile, the actual material or leather and prevent any of those nasty marks for say when it's raining or something like that. Similarly for suede, uh, which I don't have any suede bags, but for suede and new book, I do use this for shoes is this type of spray. It would just typically say suede and new book cleaner or uh, protector or anything like that. But you might wanna use this. Sometimes they come in different colors. Um, I would just get a clear one and then use this once your bag is dry on top just to kind of seal it all in and protect it even further. I recently asked some of you on Instagram what you thought and whether you were aware of orange shields. They're basically these shields that you can buy for any type of Hermes bag to put them on your hardware to protect it even further in case you have removed your plastic um, seals. They also sell, I think, feet. I think I will do a more in-depth video talking about things like the orange shields as well as bag pillows and bag organizers. I use them and whether I think they're worth it and can extend the lifetime of your bags. Okay, someone said, what bag did you recently get? I'm so impatient. This bag is proof that you should never say never. It's a design that was first released in the 1960s, I think reintroduced around 2012, I want to say, and some of the newer models. This was a limited model to 2021 and 22. And although I said that I wasn't interested in this particular bag silhouette, I do think that this exact one is very me. It is a cargo picotin. I thought this bag was super chic, very comfortable. It's very, very lightweight. I love the way it's crafted. I love the way you can sort of close it and it sits like that, but then also open it and it doesn't go all the way, um, meaning there's the lock here to stop it. And quite frankly, the motivation for me was that it was a great alternative to the Birkin 25, which is also in a very similar colorway with the palladium hardware. And so I think that makes it even more casual, but I think it's very sporty. I love about it that it doesn't have a logo on the outside. Like if you don't know what this bag is, there's no way of knowing. The only logo is on the inside at the very bottom of the bag. It kind of was, my motivation with the previous bag that I got before that, which is this one, I got this for the summer. And same, I mean, this does say Hermes on it, on the flaps, um, on the hardware, but it's a very understated bag. And I've sort of been drawn to these bags more and more. What's up? 
I also have seen from the her bag that I have and I've used pretty much all summer, Hermes canvas is extremely durable. I think I will get a lot of use out of this. Maybe a review will have to follow. So I think that's pretty much it for today. I have this idea that I wanted to run by you and it's to do some sort of video essay, maybe once a month where I talk about specific luxury items or trends, iconic items that have a relevance within the fashion world, but also throughout history. Let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in because it is quite a lengthy process to sort of edit and put together. So I want to know if that's something you would be interested in seeing, also narrated by me. If there's anything else that you would like to see on this channel, please comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Let me know what more you'd like to see on this channel going forward. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.